You didn't mention eggs. Eggs. You oh. forgot to mention eggs. Uh, um, let's talk about eggs. <laughs> now, pe pe people always ask me too, what about eggs? I know. And I tell them, I recommend eggs, and they're always very relieved. Yes. And then I say, I recommend one egg every February 29. <laughs> <laughs> and even that you know, is too many. You probably didn't get the joke out there. There's no such thing as February 29th. <laughs> <laughs> well, every four years. Every four years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you should say February 30th then. Oh, I don't okay. even know how okay. it is okay. four okay. years. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is really surprising. I'm out in California a couple of years ago. Uh, I was finishing the book then. And there was a woman who actually was part of the largest dairy company in the world, organic dairy company, and I just made a statement that uh, Campiobacteria is in 90% of the eggs they tested worldwide. They looked at organic eggs, they looked here, etc. So at the end, she politely stood up and said, what Brian just said is absolutely correct, that our company spent 17, I think, 17 or 19 million dollars, we sterilized the chicken uh, homes. Everything was perfect. We could not get rid of this bacteria. And this bacteria does everything from creating paralysis, in extreme cases, causes death. Other things about eggs, and I want you to experiment with this, the listeners in the audience here as well as home. Get vinegar, doesn't have to be expensive, boil vinegar and put an egg in it. Shell the egg, you can actually bounce it, it preserves the egg and bounce it like a rubber ball. Because it has a unique form of combined proteins that coagulate. It's almost like the protein that's a sheathing over the human cell, but much more intense and dense. And this particular protein is not digestible by the human body. I've been told by uh, experts who understand animals that the only creature that really truly digests an egg is a fox. That somehow through evolution, they developed the enzymatic ability to digest it. A human doesn't have that ability. One egg has about 230 grams of cholesterol. Your body doesn't need to eat cholesterol. Healthy bodies eating plant-based healthy diets, in fact, raw diets. You don't see this with cooked diets very much, but with raw plant-based diets, you create the amount of cholesterol you need. So some people who are eating healthy diets may have a 220 or 230 cholesterol, as Gabriel so wisely pointed out, that this is now absolutely connected with people who live long lives. When they look at centurions, which uh, they did at Tufts University back 40 years ago. They found out that uniquely these people had very high cholesterols in almost every case. And so preservative of the brain, but your body has to create that. If you eat egg cholesterol or milk cholesterol or cheese cholesterol, you're in trouble. At chicken cholesterol, fish cholesterol, yes, once again, they have saturated fat. And the fish I used to love were the couch potatoes. How about you? the ones who hung out at the bottom and ate the nonsense in the garbage. I like lobster. Lobster wasn't fat enough. What did you dip it in? Butter. Flounders. You ever see a flounder? They were actually mutated before. They had one eye up the side there. You know? <laughs> Remember in Jersey, we ate flounder all the time? <laughs> Come on, you admit you used to eat flounder. I did. I used to go out and catch them. I know. Isn't that weird? And clams. Can you imagine the clam? Clam opens up and all the pollutant goes in there. We're like crazy people. I know. So e eggs, eggs are not something you should consider. Again, great marketing. Eggs went out of style, and notice over the last five to 10 years, they've done such great marketing, they actually call it the real food. So people who don't know who they are, and they're a little insecure and trying to find themselves, they want to be real. So eggs make you real, how about that? You and I aren't real. Mm. <laughs> so the inedible, the edible, incredible egg. That's right. Isn't that, that a great a term? Yeah. The edible, incredible egg. Next, the unedible, deadly egg is what we should say. Next, next to liver. Oh, and that's eggs, another. Eggs has the highest concentration of cholesterol, 200 plus milligrams of cholesterol per egg yolk. Can you imagine that? Mm. Okay, we so. Are. Maybe I'll just add a couple of things. Um, number one, that we know that it's well established that IGF-1 is mm. produced by human, our body. We produce our own IGF-1, but that IGF-1 is driven by animal protein. What do you mean by that IGF-1? Explain, explain that, that? Yeah. Yes. yeah. It stands for insulin-like insulin growth factor 1. It's a growth hormone. It, pr it helps the child or the baby in the womb grow, but as adults, when we're not growing, excessive amounts of IGF-1 can lead to promote the growth of tissues, including cancer. 
And I'm saying that that's well established in the scientific literature today that excessive amounts of IGF-1 can increase your risk of cancers, particularly breast cancer. Mm -hmm. and, Prostate, breast. Right. And that yes, sure. dairy products and milk drive IGF-1 even more powerfully than other animal products do because it's designed for the cow to grow so rapidly early mm -hmm. in life. So for adults to be drinking dairy products is very, very, um, very risky and actually a major factor in breast cancer. Now as far as going through, and we know that a lot of people who eat eggs recognize the yolk has more cholesterol, throw the yolk away, just eat the white, but the white concentrates the protein and the protein drives age IGF-1 um, so much. Likewise, skim milk is more related to, is even more a stronger promoter of prostate cancer than even whole milk is because exactly. you move the fat, you concentrate the protein to very high levels and it's so mm -hmm. high in calcium, which, do, which inhibits vitamin D absorption. But in any case, um, the other issue is that it appears that the cholesterol in eggs have a very powerful effect on diabetes. Yes. There have been about six studies that I've mm. reviewed recently, and five out of the six show a strong relationship between egg consumption, so much so that even any eggs eaten by diabetics in one study doubled the risk of, 20, of death over a 20-year period. That's so right. the significant impact of the high cholesterol foods on the beta cells in the pancreas. And so there's some almost toxic effect going on that's outside of the effect of protein. Um, lastly, one thing I don't agree with some of some other people on this panel is the idea of our own production of cholesterol. I mean, I've been eating, I, I call the diet I recommend a nutritarian diet because as you guys mentioned, I, um, that plant-based doesn't define a diet because obviously the SAD diet is plant-based because it's only 30% of calories from animal products and most of those plants are processed foods and junk foods. So it's not really defining enough. So I made up another word, but in any case, whole foods. Let's say it again, I like plant that Plant-rich. I, I use the word nutritarian to represent a diet rich in, in nutrients. But nutritarian. I know that, but I, I think the good term might be um, nutrient-dense, plant-rich to accompany what we all believe, too. Yeah. You know, because plant-based is just too general. But nevertheless, um, what I'm saying right now is that that those of us who've been on a nutrient-rich plant-based diet most of our lives since our childhood do not have high cholesterols. We have relatively low cholesterols. And populations that are longest lived around the world have very low cholesterols, not high cholesterols. It's the longest lived people who are eating the American. It's in other words, if you have a low cholesterol and a high cholesterol meat-based diet, then something's wrong with you. In other words, the studies do show that people with low cholesterols have high risk of disease if they're on a diet that generates high, supposed to generate high cholesterol. Did you follow that? Because there's something wrong with them that represents a different, that ha they have a low cholesterol and eating a high cholesterol generating diet. But people on a diet style that doesn't generate cholesterol are, not, are okay to have low cholesterol levels. Joel, like I know that Brenda and I both have, we both, right, eating this way for many, many, many years and we both have relatively low cholesterol. Well, what do you, you, what do you consider low and high? Well, my cholesterol, my total cholesterol throughout my life, as is Brenda's, is about 130. Yeah. Mm. And my LDL is about... 80, about 90 or 85 to 90, so I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Nothing we, wrong. No. I think when, when uh, Gabriel was speaking, and I concur with Gabriel on this, we're, he's talking more 190, something like that is low. But, but you wouldn't say that people that have, who eat plant-based diets long-term, because I know hundreds of them, hundreds, and I've, I've got the clinical proof of this, that have 200 and 230 are unhealthy when they've been plant-based eaters for decades, some of these people. No, no, I agree with that, that, a, that when you push a cholesterol down with drugs, you're just covering it up. When, and, if, and your cholesterol level, if your LDL is, let's say, 120, 130, 140, it's not the LDL, it's the oxidized LDL that's exactly. at risk. And people have very low, with them eating a plant-based diet, their LDL oxidation is so low that their high LDL concentration is not a significant risk factor. Exactly. So we're agreeing with that, but I don't want people to be fearful of having a cholesterol that's lower than that either. Exactly, right? yeah, okay. exactly. Well, low is not 130. 130 is what most <coughs> vegans have. That's about the, uh -huh. I see. Okay. You know, when I spent some time in China, and this is also verified by Dr. Campbell in the China study, uh, we saw in the countryside uh, total cholesterol numbers of 90 or 100 or 110, 120, and when people had 140, they got kind of uh, weak in their legs, and they said, we probably have a heart attack like the Americans, and I said, oh no, <laughs> I mean, we're lucky to get it down to 200, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I think that you want to, as, 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 as epidemiologists, as we look at the international data, and we begin to realize that countries with the lowest cholesterol have the lowest rate of chronic diseases. 
it was very difficult to find heart disease in China. The cholesterol levels were very, very low. And <coughs> to me, I, um, I was much more aware that when we make comparisons in American society, and we say, well, if you have 180, that's a low one for America, or you have 220, you still don't have heart disease, so it doesn't make any difference. Well, it does make a difference if you have these levels that are found in societies where you don't have heart disease and they're levels of 100, 110, 120, much lower than what we usually find in Western society. You know, that makes an interesting point, that, that when we look at studies, they're done on sickly people. They're sickly, exactly. overweight, you eating, sick unhealthy, to be and, and the results are distorted <laughs> because of that. Mm. You know, You're the right. studies can You're be right. shown, we know studies can, be show, can show that, for example, people who have a normal body weight are more unhealthy, for example, because we're looking at people that are all overweight and they help, you know, so there's a lot of things wrong with studies done on a population of eating, of people eating a disease-causing diet. So we have to consider that when we're looking at those uh, studies. I, I want to jump in, but I want you to do it. So talk to us about the cholesterol mythology and what you've seen in your work monitoring, Gabriel. You, you. Well, we do need cholesterol to build our hormones. We need the cholesterol to make our brains work right. We need cholesterol to make our nervous system work right. And as unique beings, I think there's going to be a variation. And really what some of the research shows between 160 and 260, there's really no incidence difference in chronic disease. I'm talking particularly health and cancer so, and so, so forth. So there's no difference from 160 to 260s in heart attacks, what you're saying? Yes. Now that's but, on but, the, uh, the but also cancer, too. They're, they're not making a big difference about it. Okay. So, um, now, where, are they in looking at the Western population? or who are they Yes, at? we're talking about Western, primarily. Okay. Now, it's really hard for me to talk about China. It's a different world. And some of those studies were affected by the po people in real poverty, which is kind of what Joel's suggesting. So I kind of have to stick to the American. And there are some research that shows in Russia, um, and actually one research in, in um, the Bronx, okay? <laughs> Russia uh, and the Bronx, they're about the same that, now. It shows that people with a lower cholesterol actually have more heart attacks. So there's a lot of things going on. So it's, it's hard for me to get as much into the cholesterol debate. I've kind of put it aside and saying a little bit what Joel's saying is, you know, uh, according to your physiology, according to who you are, you're going to make the cholesterol that you need. We have to kind of give us the unique space to let our bodies work right. So what I have observed, however, which is a little bit what you just you said before, is like on our diets, people's cholesterol ends up on the, the live food diet, in about three weeks, it drops to about 159. But it starts usually higher. So my observation, this is just an observation, clinical observation, is that <clears throat> as our body comes into normal physiology with a live food veganic diet, then our body, our liver function, remember the liver makes 80% of your cholesterol, uh, starts to come to normal, and you actually make what you need. And I think that's the key concept here. And, uh, and the older, the, the, the much older people you work with, have you noticed that their cholesterols tend to be higher? Even on well, plant-based Well, the, the, the research, there's a very interesting study on 89-year-olds, okay? And they saw them for the next, uh, you know, 10 years of their life, 89 to 99, so this group is going to die more quickly. And they found that for every 39 points higher in cholesterol, they lived 15% longer. Now that's really interesting. But you can't manufacture it. Your body has to want that. Yeah. And the, the point is, somehow, with age, people with higher cholesterol seem to live a little longer. Of course, those are 89-year-olds. Yeah, yeah. See, that's, yeah. see, let me point out that's what he's saying. No. If you've made it to 89 and you have high cholesterol, you're not going to die from a heart attack and stroke. 
So this is a very <laughs> unique group of people. This is like a pinpoint study that's being done. But nevertheless, <laughs> a higher cholesterol, they, meant they live 15% longer. I don't yeah. think those studies mean, mean that having a high cholesterol is beneficial for longevity. I think what that study means yeah. and what, how we interpret that, and most scientists today, yeah. is that certain disease processes lower cholesterol, and occult cancers lower cholesterol, and certain mm -hmm. other types of yes. organ dysfunction lower cholesterol. Absolutely. So having, low, having your cholesterol drop when you're elderly is a sign that you have a more chronic serious disease. It's not that the low cholesterol did them in, it's that the whatever the disease um, okay. process resulted in the lower cholesterol. That's a good point. Well, that's a good, well, I'm going to say one way of looking at it, but I think something has to be said if, at, at, if you're 39 points higher, you know, something's going on with longevity. Now, maybe that conclusion is, what you said is totally valid, but there, I think there's more than one conclusion to that story. If you look at Dr. Meyer's work out of, uh, of Tufts University when he was president there, he was a nutritionist who became president there. He did brilliant work and he, he, same thing. He looked at centurions in the New England area. The medium age was 102. And he found out that all of them had you know, much higher cholesterols and they, that was the early days of us all bashing cholesterol. And I do still bash cholesterol. So this is an interesting, we haven't come to a conclusion on this yet.